ओके लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ओम सहना भवतु सहनाओ बुनक्तु सह वीर्यं करवा वहै तेजस्विना वदीतमस्तु मा विद्विषा वहै ओम शांति 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 ही यो अंतह प्रविश्य मम वाच इमाम प्रशुप्तां संजीवयति अखिल शक्ति दर स्वदाम नाम अन्याम स्टहस्त चरण श्रवण त्वगादीन प्राणा नमो भगवते पुरुषाय तुभ्यम लसतु श्रीमदानंद तीर्थेन्दुरुनो हृदंबरे यद्वच चंद्रिका स्वांत संतापं विनिकृंतति पदवाक्य प्रमाण ज्ञान प्रणम्य शिरसा गुरून व्याकरिष्ये यता बोधं विष्णु तत्व विनिर्णयम okay good afternoon everyone welcome to the 30th session of katha upanishad so we have been doing it for about a year um, of uh, you know gradually dissecting out each verse of the katha upanishad looking at key verses and words of the katha upanishad and understand the great philosophy of of the vedic sanatana dharma so we have been doing it for 12 months and what i am hoping is we we'll probably have another 4 to 6 weeks to finish the third valli of the second adhyaya today i am aiming let's see what happens i'm aiming to finish the last four mantras of the second adhyaya first valli second valli so what did we do last week uh, not last week two weeks ago following an excellent geeta session what did we uh, before the geeta session what did we do we did these four verses agni rata eko bhavanam pravishtaha rupam rupam pratirupo babuva एकस्तताोक चक्षु न लिप्यते चाक्षुष्यदोष एक so we spent some time understanding what is the meaning what is the etymology of eka and why is yama talking about this rupam rupam pratirupo babuvah where we understood that this paramatma this antaryamin who is inside the jivas he is inside all the jivas and he has a unique form in individual jivas because each jiva is unique and different and to maintain each jiva's satta pramiti and pravruti this paramatma takes a unique form he is of course has got infinite forms and there is no difference between his infinite forms and his mula roopa that we have yama has already discussed that in great detail in the second adhyaya and the first adhyaya okay so we just need to understand this and as i told you before the whole of the vibhuti adhyaya of bhagavad gita it talks about this the whole vibhuti adhyaya is wherever you know the, wherever you see greatness in a particular jiva that greatness of that particular jiva is because a particular form of the paramatma is there who is manifesting that particular greatness yeah so that is the whole philosophy of vibhuti adhyaya of gita and this these sets of three verses they kind of highlight that philosophy so our guru yama then moves on and he goes to the next set of really important verses and i'll tell you why it is very important so what does he say so he is spoken about this antaryamin who is inside all jivas then the question comes um as to what is the reason what is the meaning of all this why should we know this antaryamin who is inside us and so on so to bring home those truths yama goes through these few verses yeko vashi sarva bhutantaratma एकम रूपम बहुदा यह करोति तम आत्मस्तम ये अनुपश्यंति दीराहा तेशाम सुकम शाश्वतम न इतरेशाम 
ನಿತ್ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನ ಚೇತನಶ್ಚೇತನಾಕೋ ಬಹೂನಾ ಯೋ ವಿದತಿ ಕಾಮನ್ ತಂ ಆತ್ಮಸ್ಥಂ ಯೇ ಅನುಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಧೀರಾಹ ತಾಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಶ್ವತಿ ನ ಇತರೇಷಾ ತದೇತದಿ ಮನ್ಯಂತೆ ಅನಿರ್ದೇಶ್ಯ ಪರಂ ಸುಖಂ ಕಥಂ ನು ತದ್ವಿಜಾನೀಯ ಕಿಮು ಬಾತಿ ವಿಭಾತಿ ವ ನ ತತ್ರ ಸೂರ್ಯೋ ಬಾತಿ ನ ಚಂದ್ರ ತಾರಕಂ ನ ಮೇ ವಿದ್ಯುತ್ ಬಾಂತಿ ಕುತೋ ಅಯಂ ಅಗ್ನಿ ತಮೇವ ಬಾಂತಂ ಅನುಬಾತಿ ಸರ್ವಂ ತಸ್ಯ ಬಾಸ ಸರ್ವಮಿದಂ ವಿಭಾತಿ ಸೊ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಫೋರ್ ಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ಫೋರ್ ಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ತಾಂ ಸುಖಂ ಶಾಶ್ವತಂ ನ ಇತರೇಷಾಂ ತಾಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶಾಶ್ವತಿ ನ ಇತರೇಷಾಂ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಸೌಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯಮ ಪುಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕಾಟ ಕಾಠ ರಿಷಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸೀನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇ ಸೇ ಸುಖಂ ಶುಕಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ದಟ್ ಸುಖ ಸುಖ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಾಂತಿ so yama is talking about it is only those jeevas that get this shuka and shanti and he goes on to explain who are the ones that actually get shuka and shanti but before we go into the philosophy of, of this i just want to open up today's forum for us all to think about why do we all crave for happiness basic question right as to why we are doing this why all this uh, fuss about uh, you know um uh philosophical discussion and we all constantly seek some form of happiness or the other so who wants to go first and what is our opinion here as to why we as humans or for that matter any animal we all crave for happiness nobody goes after sorrow is it nobody goes after suffering we all seem to be constantly craving only for happiness why is that anybody wants to take that one why do we think about always happiness neeta please go ahead or shishtu uh, the the fundamental uh, sort of uh, property of the jiva is to be happy so uh, we always want to go back to our resting state which is happiness and that is why we all crave for happiness yes. wonderful sushru thank you anybody anybody has a, a different opinion for example sushru nayayikas for example the school of nyaya philosophy would say that there is suffering all everywhere they will go for it i think uh, basically it is an elusive quality in human life experience and whenever we are happy um we like it so that is why we pursue happiness so i am giving a psychological explanation which neurotransmitter they will just remind us is it dopamine or is it something else serotonin mostly but dopamine as well yeah dopamine as well and serotonin okay so that's a very uh, that's a, a that's a very psychiatric perspective from devil thanks very much for contribution so i think both of you got some aspects of this right but here is another twist because there are some schools of philosophy with thing that eradication of sorrow that is all is liberation okay it is just eradication of sorrow there is nothing called a positive experience of happiness there are some philosophies out there think about this nyaya school nyayikas are are very famous for that but the vedanta darshana of veda vyasa very categorically says that all jeevas do not crave for sorrow they positively crave for happiness and of course mundaka upanishad we are all very familiar with this verse isn't it ದ್ವಾ ಸುಪರ್ಣ ಸಯುಜ ಸಕಾಯ ಸಮಾನ ವೃಕ್ಷ ಪರಿಶಿಶ್ವ ಜಾತೆ ತಯೋರನ್ಯ ಪಿಪ್ಪಲಂ ಸ್ವಾದತ್ತಿ ಅನಶ್ನನ್ಯ ಅಭಿಚಾಕಶಿ ಸಮಾನ ವೃಕ್ಷೆ ಪುರುಷೋ ನಿಮಗ್ನ ಅನೀಶಯ ಶೋಚತಿ ಮುಖ್ಯಮಾನ ಸೊ ವಿ ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಜೀವ ಇಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಂಟ್ಲಿ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯೆಟ್ ಹಿ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ಶಿ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ರೂಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ವೇ ಫಾರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ಶಿಶ್ರೂತ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಟ್ಲಿ ರೈಟ್ all jeevas crave for happiness not just because they get some some material pleasures or said but it is a intrinsic nature of it is a jeeva swarupa yeah we all know jeeva swarupa the veda says sat chit an ananda so it is inherently blissful but it tries to crave to experience its own blissfulness 
but it is not able to do this at this point in samsara so like this bird in this in this tree it is looking outside to try and get its blissfulness or its happiness but it is not getting that why because it is facing the material world so now the next question that comes here is do material things give long lasting happiness who is going to say here that this is a yes if anybody has an answer as yes please raise your hands now does anybody think material things give long lasting happiness okay nobody has said that, uh, material things give so that's sorry yeah yeah no they, they don't i think nachiketa also refused it isn't it in the first chapter is yeah yeah so do you, do you remember that verse uh, neeta ji about uh, what specifically he said when when our uh, guru yama said oh here is your wealth here is long life here you be here is your chariots here is your you know beautiful men or women here is your dancers and instruments here is all the wealth chakravarti i'll make you live for a millions of years i'll even make you live until brahma kala and so on but what did he say what did yama nachiketa's response to that you remember that beautiful verse so uh, yeah so okay so yama said the, the nachiketa said that show bhavaha yeah martyasya yad antike so whatever you give how much ever i leave even if i live for a million years that is still a limited phase i mean i cannot live million plus one one day right i i am gone in 1 million if you give me all this wealth i'll get bored with all this wealth after some time so absolutely right neeta ji thanks for reminding us that that nachiketa had actually refused all this so material things do not give long lasting happiness it's a fact okay but then here is the beauty of vedanta darshana vedanta na darshana vedic philosophy then says yes in the material world you can't get temporary happiness but actually every day you are actually experiencing your own blissful state you do experience your blissful state but you are just not aware of it okay so i got a small quiz here which upanishad discusses the various states of our consciousness so who is going to take this quiz mandukya mandukya devil ji very good thank you very much so mandukya upanishad and we have done this i think 2 years ago now right so mandukya upanishad talks to us about this state of consciousness of the jiva where they actually experience that blissful state okay so next question who wants to answer that question what is that state of consciousness of the jivas that we go through every day of our life where there is an experience of our own innate blissful nature so which state is that okay so that is sushupti sushupti so who was that sorry Sushupti, yeah, Prati. Prati Baji here. Okay, very good. Correct answer, Prati Baji. So the Sushupti state actually reminds us of our blissful state, but it's just that we are not aware of it. So let's quickly go through this Manduki Upanishad verses. It talks about the Jagriti state, then it talks about the Swapna state, then it talks about the Sushupti state. Yatra Shupto na kincha na kamang kamayate na kincha na Swapnam pashyati tat Sushuptam. Sushupti sthana ha yeki bhuta ha pragna na gana eva ananda mayohi ananda book. Cheto mukaha pragna ha tritiya ha pada ha. So that ananda book, it is at that Sushupti state where it experiences its inherent blissfulness. But the problem there is. when it is in close companion of the supreme it doesn't realize that it is actually experiencing that blissful state it is only when it wakes up the jiva then says oh yeah i've had a very blissful sleep last night and we do say that in our daily experience so here here is that clue that although the material things do not give you lasting happiness there is a situation of your consciousness that you go through every night and there you experience your inherent bliss and here we discuss this in chandogya upanishad if you can recall yeah so here is another wake up quiz here so who are these two characters in chandogya upanishad who is the dad here and who is the son here who wants to quickly take that one shweta ketu and uddalakarun fantastic thanks uh, sushrut ji so uddalaka aruni and shweta ketu here there is a conversation between yama and nachiketa who is the another son of uddalaka so this chandogya upanishad chapter 6 that we have done 
actually talks about this this sushupti state and it actually defines what is that sushupti state yeah and we have done this uddalako arunihi shvetaketum putram uvacha swapnantam me somya vijanihi iti yatra etat purushaha swapiti nama sata somya tada sampanno bhavati स्वम अपीतो बवती तस्मादेनम स्वपिति आचक्षते स्वम ही अपीतो बवती सो उद्दालका टीचर्स इज सन द अरगन सन श्वेतकेतु अबाउट दिस स्वप द सुषुप्ति स्टेट दैट स्वप स्टेट एंड ही एक्चुअली डिफाइंस व्हाट इज दैट स्वप स्वप इज स्वम ही अपीतो बवती स्वम मींस स्वतंत्र व्हाट इज सतन स्वतंत्र स्वतंत्र इज परमात्मा राइट स्वतंत्रम Swatantro Bhagavan Vishnu, who as Acharya has said, that Swam Apitaha Bhavati. Apitaha means he goes and embraces this Swatantra. Swam Apito Bhavati Tasma Denam Swapiti Achakshate. So the Sushupti state is the state where this Jiva embraces the Paramatma, and that is why it also experiences its its bliss. and again the same chandogya brings home these truths and I, i just want to recite because these are beautiful verses sa yata shakunhi sutro sutrena prabaddo disham disham patitva anyatra ayatanam alabdva bandanam eva upashrayate evam eva kalu somya tan mano disham disham patitva anyatra ayatanam alabdva प्राणमेव उपाश्रयते प्राणबंधनम ही सौम्य मन सो ब्यूटिफुल ब्यूटिफुल अनालजी ऑफ उद्दाल का एक्सप्लेनिंग हाउ दिस जीवा इन द वेकफुल स्टेट एंड ऑल्सो इन द ड्रीम स्टेट इज गोइंग अराउंड बट इट इज अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ दिस थ्रेड विच इज अटैच टू दिस पिलर इट गोज अराउंड बट इवेंचुअली इट इज टायर्ड एंड देन इट कम्स बैक एंड रेस्ट नेक्स्ट टू दिस दिस पोस्ट दिस पोस्ट इज ब्रह्मन this one is the jiva and again uddalaka gives an analogy and explains what is the situation of the jiva so to to wrap up this slide yes we all crave for happiness because it is our inherent nature but we are looking in the wrong direction towards the material world which does not give us permanent happiness it only gives us a false sense of happiness not really the true blissful state of the jiva and that blissful state of the jiva we all experience every day in our life which is described in detail in mandukya upanishad and our friend uddalaka has also explained this further in chandokya upanishad so go back to those slides and and have a look at it because this is this is a, a very key philosophy of the vedic rishis of talking about the blissful state of the jivas even in samsara and what we should be aiming for really is that we experience that long lasting eternal eternal non material happiness yeah not just in sushupti in sushupti we are not aware of that but the rishi says you reach that state mate where you can be consciously and voluntarily aware of your blissful state that is the state of liberation which is where yama is taking us okay so yama is saying tesham sukham shashvataha so it is only that jiva that will experience the tesham shukam shashvatam when who is that person who gets that lasting happiness that jiva who ye anupashyanti dhiraha so dhiraha we have done it in so many places dhiraha what is the etymology of dhira dhira is a, is an interesting complicated word where the easy way of looking at it is split it into dhi and raha so that one which has knowledge and who rejoices in knowledge because that one is knowledgeable this one is very brave because he is brave he is not afraid of anything and he has got a strong sense of conviction so those are all the ideas of dhiraha so it is only the dhiraha and who what does the dhira do anu pashyanti so here also see anu anu we have done before anubhava shastra anuguna that jiva which experiences after having learned the vedic philosophy after having had the vedic knowledge what knowledge does he have this dhira then ye kam so everything is related to each other so that jiva who after having studied all the shastras has the knowledge of this ekaha and we have done the etymology of ekaha in the last class 
Yeka means not just number one, but the only one, the independent one, the unique, something that is so unique that you can't compare it to anybody. One, but capable of infinite forms because of its omnipotency. That is also a meaning of ekaha. And of course, the classic uh, etymology is esha eva karoti iti ekaha. That is esha and karoti. Ka and e becomes eka. So esha eva karoti means he is the only one who is an independent doer of everything. Yeah, he is the sarvakarta. So that is also the idea there. So he knows the eka, but how does he know the eka? He knows the eka as vashi. Okay. Vashi is a nice, easy, simple word. Vashi means that this, I, that uh, me as a jiva is under the control of this Ekanamaka Paramatma. I am under his control. That is what you need to understand. That is the very first requirement before you make any other philosophical progress. Yeko Vashi. Sarva Bhuta Antara Atma. Very, very clear words and no controversy is there. So he who understands this Yeka Namaka Paramatma, under whose control that he is. Okay. And what does this person do? So we understood this Bimba and Pratibimba equation, right? We have done enough of that. So the Pratibimba or the relay, reflections are the jivas, and the Bimba is the Paramatma. This is not to be taken literally, it only gives you a, an idea of independence and dependence. This object is always independent, whereas this reflection. Here is dependent on the object. If the object is not there, the reflection is not there. If the object does not move, the reflection does not move. That is the idea of Bimba, Bimba Pratibimba Bhava philosophy, as you know. So this Pratibimba or the Jiva is under the control of the Bimba, which is a Paramatma. And where is this Paramatma? Sarva Bhuta Antara Atma. So what does this Atma means? Atma means Swami, my Swami, my controller. That is another literal meaning of Atma. So this Paramatma is inside as my Swami, as controller. Okay. So, but how does he do that? He is only one Rupa, Ekam Rupam. But Bahuda Yah Karoti. He is in infinite forms, in infinite Jivas. Although he is one, because of his achintya adbhuta shakti or the supreme power of the Lord, he is the same, but he is inside all the jivas as sarvabhuta antara atma and he is controlling all the jivas. Therefore, he is called ekaha and that soul that has realized this ye anupashyanti diraha tesham shukam shashvatam na itaresham. Okay, so these are all very clear words. I don't know why some, some folks in other schools of philosophy, they try to uh, twist the philosophy here. Our friend Yama is very categorically saying, there is this Paramatma, there are these many jivas, all these jivas are under control of the Paramatma. This is how the transaction of the universe happens. Where is, this, where is the oneness of the jiva and Paramatma here? God only knows. Certainly, that is not the language of Yama here. Okay, so this becomes very important because we've had lots of discussions about this Nishkama Karma, right? Of Nishkama Karma of Gita. And we, we, we just cite all these verses. But do we really understand why Krishna has said Nishkama Karma is important? Why if you do Nishkama Karma, you will not have any karmic imprints on your Linga Sharira? And the reason for that is here, Jiva Kartrutva Vichara. So I just want one of you to just explain to us what the Jiva Kartrutva is. Perhaps I can pick on Suresh or Su Shushrut or anybody else who wants to give us a very brief view of what the Jiva Kartrutva is and how this verse fits in very beautifully with that. Mm -hmm. So any one of you want to take this and, and, and remind us of this, please. Suresh. Yeah, um, so... Uh... It is uh, dependent independence in the sense that uh, there is limited independence for action, uh, but each of it is actually dependent on, uh, uh, so it's defined by uh, our uh, karma, swabhava and prayatna. So that is what fundamentally determines the kartrutva, which is, uh, but, but the fact is that we are not independent in 
actually defining the, this kartrutva we are dependent so so it's it's kind of depend dependent independence which is determined by the three things fantastic thank you suresh for that yes so that jiva kartrutva vichara becomes very important and as uh, suresh mentioned swabhava anadi karma and prayatna so if this god is independent things one usually asks why does he not make all jivas do all good things why are, why do some jivas do bad things and so on and so forth and the explanation for that is each jiva has its own swabhava and based on its swabhava it does anadi karma and the, its anadi karma influences its current constitute its current position in samsara and that determines what kind of prayatna the efforts it is going to make so all that the supreme does is he just gives the facilities for the jivas to enact these things yeah but he is always independent yeah this is very very important because the next verse of mundaka upanishad as you know clearly says dushtam yada pashyanti anyam isham asya mahimanam iti vita shokaha so when does the sorrowful state of the jiva goes when this jiva realizes there is this another guy next to me and he is a controller of me and he is an independent being i am doing all this because he has allowed me to do so that i can work out my salvation or work out whatever it is my destination is yeah so that jiva kartrutva is essentially to understand this philosophy that yama is teaching us in katha upanishad about eko vashi sarva bhutantaratma ekam roopam बहुदा यह करोती तम आत्मस्तम ये अनुपश्यंति दीराहा तेशाम सुकम शाश्वतम न इतरेशाम सो दिस इज ब्यूटीफुल ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट सुकम नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट ही इज गोइंग टू टेल अस समथिंग व्हिच इज वेरी कॉमन वी वी नो दिस वर्स वी 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 यूज दिस ऑल द टाइम इवन इन द शांति मंत्र वी से शांति ही शांति ही शांति सो ही इज से तेशाम शांति ही शाश्वति ही न इतरेशाम so he expands this idea a little bit more and this is a very popular verse many acharyas have cited this including the modern ones that that cite this verse of the second adhyaya second valli nityo nityanam chetana chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadati kamann tam atmastam ye anupashyanti diraha tesham shantihi shashvati hi na itaresham previously it was sukham now this is a further expansion of what that sukha actually is and he puts the word shanti hi to whom he who knows nityo nityanam chetanas chetanana so let us look at this first line it is interesting so nityo nityanam so literally i have translated this for us eternal of the eternals then we have chetanas chetanana sentient of the sentients Okay, so this is a little bit puzzling, isn't it? What does it mean to say nityo nityana? What does what does it mean to say that this Paramatma or the Supreme Person is the Eternal of the Eternals and He is the Sentient of the Sentients? Okay, so my first question there is: What are the eternal eternal entities of Vedic philosophy? So first we need to know when He says nityo nityana, we need to know what are the nityas first in Vedic philosophy? What are the nitya padarthas? Okay, so I put the key verse there of shrimad bhagavatam 2 10 12 so who wants to take this up who wants to tell us what are the eternal entities of vedic philosophy okay eternal yeah. uh, go for it uh, nita ji yeah you got you given the answer there uh, dravyam karma cha kalas cha swabhavo jeeva eva cha yadanu grahat santi na santi yadupekshaya so dravyam it uh, dravyam is the uh, material primordial matter karma kala time and swabhava and jivas are all eternal and of course parmatmas mm, of course parmatmas yeah beautiful yeah thank you so yeah so so the bhagavatam gives you the six eternal six eternals in the, in this very important verse that acharya cites quite regularly and it gives you all the eternals and then look at the second word second line of bhagavatam which is why you have this nityo nityanam idea yes there are this various eternal entities dravyam karma kala swabhava jeeva they are all okay eternals but yad anugrahatah santi na santi edupekshya these fellows are all eternals because this eternal has allowed them to be eternal 
Okay, so that is a key idea of the Bhagavatam 2, 10, 12. And that is what here Yama is saying, Nityo Nityanam. So here is a, uh, I think I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got some concepts about what does independence actually mean? Yeah? What is the meaning of independence? When I say Swatantro Bhagavan Vishnuhu, what does that mean? So we will come to that. I've got this in the left-hand corner here, but I'll come to that in two minutes. But let me just handle these words here. Nityo Nityanam and Chetanas Chetananam. And this is a, an, an, a, a recurrent theme in the Upanishads. Yeah? When God is, will always be said, he is this of that, he is this of that, and so on. So Chetanas Chetananam, he is sentient of the sentience. Look at Keno Upanishad. We haven't done it here. Talavakara Upanishad of Sama Yajurveda. So there he says, uh, you know, Chaturmukha and Shiva, Rudra are having a conversation. So Rudra is asking, Kene Shitam Patati Preshitam Manaha, Kena Pranaha Pratamaha Preti Yuktaha, Kene Shitam Vacham Imam Vadanti, Chakshuhu Shrotram Kavudevo Inakti. This is Rudra asking Chaturmukha Brahma, by whom are all these things working? Shrotra, Chakshur, Vag, Prana, and so on. So Chaturmukha immediately says, Shrotrasya Shrotram. Manasa mano, yad vachaha vacham, savu pranasya pranaha, chakshushashta chakshuhu, atirmucha diraha, pretya asmad loka damruta bhavati. Look at the ideas, they're all very similar ideas. Nityo nityanam, chetanas chetananam, shrotrasya shrotram, manasa mano. He is the speech of the speech, he is the mind of the mind, he is the speech, he is the prana of the prana, he is the eye of the eye, and that is how the the Upanishad goes, Keno Upanishad, it's, a, it's an amazing Upanishad, we'll do it at some point. And then of course, Brihadaranek Upanishad, in the second Adhyay, it says, Satyasya Satyam Iti. So Satyasya Satyam, Nityo Nityanam, Chetanas Chetananam. So you can see these, uh, these ideas of the Rishis, the ideas that the Rishis have seen about this Supreme Being, where it seems to give some kind of a superlative adjective to this, this Brahman, uh, and, and, and wants us to convey some ideas to us. What is that idea? The idea really they are talking about is the independence of Brahman. Okay, so how does that, how do we, how do we grasp that idea? So I got a question here. What is the difference between the eternality of Brahman compared to the eternality of Jivas and Mula Prakriti? So who is going to take this one? Just to open up for discussion. So there has to be a difference, isn't it? So there are some people who think that God is independent because he controls all the dependent things. God is eternal and is independent because he controls all the non-eternal things. There are lots of non-eternal things out there. But the philosophy there is if God is omnipotent. He cannot not just control only the non-eternal entities. His omnipotency is only established when he also controls the eternal entities. Yeah? If he does not control the eternal entities, then he loses his omnipotence. So this is the great thinking of our rishis. The philosophy is really deep out there. That even the eternality of eternal things are eternally dependent on the eternal Brahman. Okay, So that is the, that is the summary of that. So Jada Prakriti, as Neetaji mentioned, the jivas, they are all, of course, they are eternal. But they are eternally dependent on the independent Paramatma. And when in Tattva Sankhyana, when Acharya says, Swatantram Aswatantram Cha Dvividam Tattva Mishyate Swatantro Bhagavan Vishnu. And he establishes that very, very categorically for, for us, for our benefit. But then the key question is, how do you define independence? Okay. How do you define independence? And again, this is the beauty of Vedic philosophy. You need to think about this idea of independence. This is what does that independence of the Supreme God, not just the Supreme, Supreme God of the Hindus, but Supreme God of world religions, he has to be independent by definition. Okay, So our rishis tell us what is the definition of independence. So here is the definition. Swarupa, Pramiti, Pravriti, Tat lakshana satta trividye para anapeksham swatantram tad apeksham aswatantram. So beautiful line, but let me just translate this. So the essential nature, the power of knowing, becoming known and the power to act. So this is what all sentient things do. 
a being which is not dependent on any other agency for its own essential nature nature for its own power of knowing for its own power of becoming known to others and for its own ability to act for all these four things this sentient being is not dependent on anything else that is the classic definition of independent think about this so this will take a few weeks to dig in to go in but think about this concept of independence and our rishis have defined that swatantro bhagavan vishnu who because of this yeah whereas all other things are dependent on another agency and that agency is of course the supreme lord and even shvetashvata upanishad also gives us the same idea and we have done this before and this is the core definition of vedic philosophy that there are only three entities in the world and that two entities interact with the third entity in a particular way and what does shvetashvata upanishad says nya agnya dwa anisha shara atmanav ishate deva ekaha clear words no controversy there nya agnya dwa anisha they are dependent shara atmanav ishate deva ekaha so these are all the rules these are all the 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 proofs of the vedas that categorically establish the plurality of selves the differences that exist out there and how everything is dependent on brahman so these are all the evidences from upanishads and the vedas themselves and these are not some concocted ideas of certain folks yeah I, we need to take that into consideration when we do spirited discussions of the vedas neeta and shishru madhu i just had a small doubt uh, so if to for some for us to know uh, brahman we need to know the vedas but here you have said that becoming known is also independent so is that because of our deficiency rather than his qualities okay so so yeah uh, thanks sushil so the the idea there is what we are dealing with this is i think there are two ideas that that you are thinking about here one is for you and me sushil our ability to know something and our ability to become known our ability to act yeah and our natures yeah they are all dependent on the supreme okay so for example as you said yes we can know from the vedas correct but remember without his grace you are not going to be able to know anything yeah so it is the grace is where the dependence comes in and the the, the divine grace is where the independent power of the supreme lord comes in yes we can try and read a, a million times the vedas but if we don't have his grace we will not be able to understand it so hope that that answers that question so moving on so so this is this is interesting let's dwell on this verse a little bit more so nityo nityanam chetanas chetanam eko next next to three lines eko bahunam yo vidadati kama so in the first line we understood how yama is make, wanting us to understand the concept of independence of the supreme lord the concept of independence yeah nobody can become independent lord yeah you can we can all live in an illusory world about that idea but according to yama nobody is independent except the independent lord himself all others are dependent and he qualifies this further this ekaha okay what does he do bahunam yo vidatati kama okay let's look at this tam atmastam ye anupashyanti dhiraha tesham shanti hi shashvati itaresham so these two last two lines are easy but the middle one needs to be thought about a bit more eko bahunam yo vidadati kamaan okay so this person is ekaha but what he does is bahunam yo vidadati kamaan for all the multiplicity of jeevas what does he do vidadati he gives them whatever they desire for okay so very very easy very clear philosophy there that is coming out from yamade so what is he saying this ekaha we know ekaha means one independent unique one but capable of infinite forms esha eva karoti this one independent form who is also celebrated in the chandogya upanishad as you know sadeva somya idamagra asit ekam eva advitiyam 
it is always helpful to revise ourselves as to what did uddalaka tell chan in to shweta ketu in chandogya about this brahman he is ekam he is eva he is advitiya so what does that mean ekam we know this ekam is described quite a lot in katha upanishad what the idea of ekam is eva means no internal difference although he may have a million infinite forms there is no internal difference between his mula roopa avatar roopa bimba roopa vibhuti roopa aavesh roopa and whatever else you want to call there is no internal difference okay and ad dvitiyam he is without a second so when you bring this idea this is this is essentially gives you without a second is he is an independent supreme being with no internal difference who does everything so i have reminded you of when in in the of the visishta advaita school of shri Yam, yamunacharya when he takes up this verse sadeva somi idam akra asi dekameva advitiyam he reminds people this does not mean you and Brahm, you and brahman are one and the same that is not the view of yamunacharya of, of visishta advaita school and he takes a beautiful example of the chola king when it says when it is said our chola king is one without a second in the world it only rules out the existence of any other ruler equal to him but not the existence of his son his staff or his queen okay it's a very very strong argument of yamuna acharya which is whole heartedly supported by shrimad acharya as well in all his philosophy so coming back to this so this ekah what does he do bahunam yo vidadati kaman so this bahunam there is multiplicity of souls that is you and me and what does he do vidadati kaman so we all have like that bird in the tree we have endless desires we are jumping from branch to branch and eating all these fruits and that desires whatever is desired by the soul this brahman is so gracious he is so kind and he is so caring for his uh, for his souls that he allows them and he gives them whatever they desire yo vidadati kaman who yo bahunam bahunam look at the word bahunam multiplicity of jeevas vidadati kaman who ekaha one what is this kaman desired by souls what do the souls desire you and me what do we desire we desire all these material things out there yeah this is our state so when you look at this yama is very very clearly saying that this there is this independent brahman and then there are this multiplicity of jeevas and there are these various material things that are out there and these jeevas are constantly craving for material things but this brahman who is ekaha he allows all this because of his infinite grace he gives them their facilities to do all this so there are three entities brahman jeeva and matter categorically as per this verse and this knowledge of the five fold difference and we have done this before is what is literally called prapancha and some philosophies will say understanding this constitutional position of the universe is fundamental to our liberation okay so i'm going to just pick up shushrut here to tell us what is prapancha and what are the five fold differences shushrut so uh, the differences between one jiva and another jiva difference between one jada and another jada difference between one jada and one another jiva and then difference between jiva and parmatma and jada and parmatma so fantastic so pancha vidho bedaha prapancha so that is the prapancha this prapancha has got uh, the some people think that the, this world is called prapancha because it's made of five pancha bhutas that is a very superficial philosophy but the deeper philosophy is this five fold difference that is out there that is what is the philosophy all about and what the the vedic rishis are asking us to do certainly what yama is asking us to do in this verse is try and grasp this try and understand this this philosophy of you are dependent you are dependent you are dependent on this independent principle and there are all these diverse natures of the universe that you need to understand and only when you understand the diverse nature of the universe the different inherent natures of the jeevas and that these fellows are always dependent on the supreme then you have a chance of making some progress what is that progress so although this jeeva ekah bahunam yo vidata ati kaman so but yes he is this antaryamen is inside this multiplicity of jeevas and we need to know this tam atmastam ye anupashyanti diraha tam means that brahman atmastam means inside me atmastaha 
ये अनुपश्यंति दीराह तेषाम शांति ही शाश्वति ही ना इतरेशाम because only when we reach this state of knowledge when we when we understand when we when we have this conviction that this is the truth of the vedic philosophy until we reach that point there is no hope for us for us at all and that is the reason why uh, and i would want to request one of you to recite this and that is the reason why in in chapter 73 in gita krishna has very categorically said this who is this diraha not an not a, unfortunately not most of us are in that situation 99.99.99% of us are only more interested to go to meadow hall and do shopping but not to do veda parayana okay so and krishna has there categorically said in 73 so who wants to recite that 7 73 i'll go yeah uh मनुष्या सहस्रेशो कशिदत्सिद्ध यतता सिद्धा कस्ना थैंक यू वेरी मच सो कुरयास इज दट प्रहलाद जी यस ओके वेरी गुड वेलकम प्रहलाद जी फॉर अवर फोरम सो प्रहलाद जी इज फ्रॉम स्लव एंड ही इज जॉइंड एस टूडे इज वेल um so welcome so yeah very beautifully recited so krishna is very beautifully said not everybody is able to do this not everybody is a diraha you need to you need to work at it you need you need a lot of time and dedication to think about these truths yama i am teaching you this yama is saying nachiketa i am teaching you all this but unfortunately you know what most of us are not dirahas only some of us are and which is the idea that is also picked up by krishna so then the question is how do we become diraha and so on so that is our own individual sadhanas of getting that knowledge and putting it into practice and that is what all our shastras tell us okay so tam atmastam ye anupashyanti diraha then yama says tesham shantihi previous verse he said tesham sukham now he says tesham shantihi shashvatihi na itaresham so in in here shanti takes an entirely different word shanti is a much more of an expansion of sukha the jiva sukha is expanded further in shanti so what does it actually mean let's look at this we have done this before so shanti hi so shanti has got what it's got sha sha means what sham sham means what ananda okay right then then you have ananda antihi that is the the end of your ananda so for each jeevas we have our own inherent capacity of ananda so we will attain attain our fullness our blissfulness my blissfulness is different from chaturmukha brahmas my blissfulness will be different from uh, vayu tattva my blissfulness will be different from shushruts so our each person's quanta of blissfulness is different but for us it will be full and that is called shanti then the other way of looking at it is sha plus anta and e e is of course knowledge sha means jnana the highest levels of jnana ananda that we have and that is our state of liberation right jnana ananda maya he is jnana ananda maya we also become jnana ananda maya as per our capacity so that fellow who knows dityo nityanam chetanas chetananam yeko bahunam yo vidadati kaman tam atmastam ye anupashyanti diraha तेषाम शांति ही शाश्वति ही न इतरेशाम ब्यूटीफुल सो नाउ आवर फ्रेंड आवर फ्रेंड नाचिकेता हैज लिसन टू ऑल द हाई फ्लाइंग फिलॉसफी दैट यमा हैज सेड इदर ओ यू आर सेइंग अबाउट दिस ब्रह्मन यू आर दिस बिग फेलो ही सो बिग नित्योनते आम चेतन चेतना नाम यू विल गेट सुखा यू विल गेट शांति ही एंड ऑल दैट so now nachiketa who is a young boy he is a naughty boy but he is a i won't say naughty he is a very quiet boy but he is a, he is listening to all the things is yamai saying now he flips the argument a little bit okay you are saying all this you are an aparoksha gnani yama what is your experience of this brahman okay so he will ask you are saying all this but what is your experience you are giving all the theoretical aspects of this but what is the practical aspect you are sitting in this yamaloka you you are holding a post in yamaloka where you are deciding the destiny of souls and eventually when this manvantara have finishes you will go back and then you will hang out with uh, chaturmukha brahma in brahmaloka and when the paranta kala has happened when the pralaya has happened you will go into brahman's womb and then before the next creation you will cross the viraja nadi and you will go to moksha that is all good but you are an aparoksha gnani what is your 
experience of this Brahman. So this is a very, very philosophically profound statement that Yama then says here. Tad yetad iti manyante anirdesham param sukam. Khatam nu tad vijaniyam kivu bhati vibhati va. So he will give a very, very perplexing answer to this. And this is the greatness of Vedic Rishis. And we see this kind of an explanation in many places. And I'll explain what it actually means. Tad yetad iti manyante. So, so what he says is tat, that one that is there in moksha stiti, yetat, that which is very close inside you as your antaryam. So that we know that. And our friend, our guru Yama has said in so many places like So here it is a slightly different. So people, the knowledgeables know that that tat which is there in moksha stiti, that etad which is there in your, in your antaryamen, that supreme being is anirdeshyam. Okay. Nirdesha means that which is describable or measurable. Whereas Yama says he is anirdesha. Yeah, he is indescribable, he is immeasurable. Okay, that is the meaning. But we know from the Shastras he is Paramam Sukha. Veda, Apaurushaya Vedas have told us that he is Paramam Sukha. But how much of this is, is indescribable and immeasurable? Okay. And this is an easy way of looking at it. I mean, it's very, we have, again, we have dis discussed these kind of issues before. You know, we cannot write the taste of a coffee or an ice cream or a mango, is it? We can't. If somebody says, what is, the, how do you write the taste of a coffee or a taste of an ice cream or a taste of a mango? We can't do it. We can't write it. But only we can experience this. And when we experience, we can say, yes, I tasted a coffee. I can say, I can only say it's nice. But how nice it was, what is the measurement, what is the quantity of the niceness, you cannot say that. Yeah, that is, a, that is there in our, in our practical experience. And Yama says the same thing here. That one is paramam sukam, but I, I, I have experienced this in a very transient way as a aparoksha jnanin, but I can't explain to you what it is. I, because you, each person has to experience this for himself. That is the idea there. Our experience of God is unexplainable. If, if we all become aparoksha jnanins at some point, uh, hopefully we will, we will, the, the shastras tell us that we might have a, a flash, a lightning flash of the supreme and we might experience him very transiently. But then we may not know, did we experience him? Did we not experience him? How much did we experience him? So those are all the questions that come. And that is exactly what Yama is talking here. So he says, Khatam no tad vijaniyam. He says, when I, when I, yes, I, I think I got this flash of light. I had this very brief experience of the Supreme when, uh, because I'm an Aparoksha Jnanin, but I'm not able to explain this. Khatam no tad vijaniyam. I'm not able to explain. I, I actually don't know whether I saw him or not. Kimu bati vibhati va. Did I see that light? I did not see that light. I really don't know because it is such a magical experience, experience that I'm not able to describe this okay so this is this is the fundamental truth of of self-realization and god realization when we approach that state of god realization we might as per our capacities be able to appreciate that being but we may not be able to write it and explaining to explain it to another person because it's an individual personal experience Okay. And you cannot explain this. Our Upanishads talk about this quite a lot. And let me take this Keno Upanishad. Uh, today is our Keno Upanishad season. So here, again, uh, Chaturmukha says, you know the person who really knows about the Supreme? Avignatam vijanatam, vignatam avijanatam. Okay. So what does that mean? This is the similar kind of verse that also comes in the Persian proverb. So this is beautiful verse from Kena. Avignatam vijanatam. He who knows that he does not know actually knows. Avijanatam vijanatam. He who goes around says, I know Brahman, I am Brahman. Let me show you Brahman with a long beard. That fellow actually does not know anything. This is a resounding statement of Kena Upanishad. Look at the Persian proverb. Very, very similar. He who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool shun him. He who knows not and knows that he knows 
not is a child teach him he who knows and knows not that he knows is asleep wake him he who knows and knows that he knows is wise follow him okay so there is a slight twist of the persian proverb but similar kind of ideas there about avignatam vijanatam vignatam avijanatam is what yama is saying khatam nu tad vijaniyam kimu bati vibati va okay so again katha upanishad we have done it in our first adhyaya third valli ashabdam asparsham arupam avyayam tatha arasam nityam agandavachayat when yama reminded about the greatness of the supreme who this brahman is he said you cannot see you cannot hear him you cannot touch him you cannot see him and so on the idea there is we all have materialized so with materialized we can't see him okay ashabdam asparsham arupam avyayam tatha arasam all the five tanmatras have been nested here Okay. And similarly, Taitre also captures the same idea. He says, "Yato vacho nivartante apraapya manasa sahar." You cannot grasp him through your material mind, and also you cannot grasp him fully. Okay. So these are all the ideas that that Yama says. Yama is very humble and straightforward. He is very honest, and that is the greatness of all the Vedic rishis. No Vedic rishi in any of the Upanishads have actually said. i know about brahman no everybody will say i know nothing i know nothing i have not seen i don't know what it is but i am getting this insights and i am just reciting this so that is the humbleness of the vedic rishis nobody says that he knows god and when that is the situation of the vedic rishis it's very interesting there are all these all these buffoons out there uh, everywhere who say that they are god or they have seen god or they can charge you a 100 dollars or a 1000 dollars and say that they can show you god i don't know how they can do it but that is not the view of the veda vedanta darshana vedanta darshana is very clear e our experience of god is an individual experience based on our capacity the shastras can give you a prescription for it as to how you can do it but ultimately it is our own experience that matters which is the key idea so then the question happens is so how can he be seen then okay if he is anirdeshyam paramam sukam how can you see him so immediately our our guru yama then classifies this and we have done this the same verse in gita natatra suryo bati na chandra tarakam namaye vidyuto banti kuto ayam agni and in gita 156 we have a similar verse so who wants to write it neeta ji do you want to recite this verse yes नतभासयते सूर्यो न शशाको न पापक यद्वान निवर्तंते तद्धाम परम मम thank you neeta ji beautiful again so yes very similar and again we have done this okay i have reminded you so many times every time you do a verse in katha please search for a verse in gita because there will always be a verse in gita that krishna will tell you which is very similar to कथा उपनिषद सो न तत्र सूर्यो बाति न चंद्र तारकम नमो विद्युतो बांति कुतो अयम अग्नि सो यू लुक एट दिस तत्र सूर्य सूर्य इज देयर बाति न चंद्र तारकम चंद्र इज देयर द मून नमो विद्युतो नो तारकम आई हैव आई मिस्ड इट हियर न चंद्र तारकम तारकम इज द स्टार्स नमो विद्युतो बांति विद्युत मींस लाइटनिंग कुतो अयम अग्नि सो दीस आर ऑल द फाइव थिंग्स दैट वी हैव दैट एक्चुअली गिव अस अ सेंस ऑफ नॉलेज राइट बिकॉज़ दे दे इमिट लाइट ऑफ वेरियस टाइप्स and when there is light we can see something light is knowledge and you can see so one approach to looking at this is these material things cannot show you god so that is one idea the other idea is we always have to think about the abhimani devatas right abhimani vyapadeshas to tad vishesha anugativyam as vedanta sutra has reminded us so wherever in upanishads there is this this uh, this surya chandra that are come in we should immediately go to surya devata chandra devata and so on surya is 12th rank moon is chandra is 12th rank stars is all the rishis of various ranks so you can do that uh, devata taratamya study of all the stars then lightning who is the who is the abhimani of lightning quick quiz who wants to take this indra very good excellent uh, so uh, should eighth eighth rank uh, vajrayuda lightning eighth rank so lightning and the fire of course is agni means the 15th rank in the vedic pantheon so yama says that yes these fellows also cannot show him you they cannot we can, we can, like me i can, i also don't know but i can only have a glimpse but these fellows can also not show you this 
Okay, that is another meaning. And the third meaning is that God's realm, which is transempirical beyond matter, in that place there is no material sun, there is no material moon, there is no material star, there is no material lightning, and there is no material fire. Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's so so many ideas. Krishna again, that's what he brings that idea, isn't it? Here, natat basayate suryo narshashanko na pavakaha. He is talking about that place, his supreme abode. In, in Katha Upanishad, Yama has said that supreme abode is Tad Vishnoho Paramam Padam. He has very, very categorically said that Yama in Katha Upanishad. And that Vishnoho Paramam Padam, Krishna, who is Vishnu himself, then says that Paramam Padam, my abode, na tad basayate suryo, na shashanko, na pavagata, but yad gatva na nivartante, tad dhama paramam mama. Tad dhama is what? Tad Vishnoho Paramam. Padam. Look at the similarity of verses. It's quite striking. Kata and, Cha and, uh, and Gita. So if material light cannot show, then how can we see him? So and uh, all our teachers have always said that don't search outside. Don't go to temple to temple to temple. Yes, it's useful to go. But make the inner journey. Search him inside. Just going to the temples is not going to take you to moksha. It should just be a gateway for your inner search. Make the inner journey is the key idea. So use the inner light of knowledge to he to see him with his grace, which is what Yama says in this verse. Tameva bantam anubhati sarvam. Tasya basa sarvamidam vibhati. So who wants to take up the same similar verse in chapter 15, 12? So who wants to recite that today? We got another 10 minutes to finish today's class. 10, 12 minutes. So, yes, I'll, I'll take it up then. So, 15, 12. So, what does it say? Yad aditya gatam che tejo jagat pasayate akilam yad chandramasi yad chagno tat tejo viddi mamakam tameva bantam anubati sarvam tasya basa sarvamidam vibasi vibati. So clear similarity. And again, it comes to this idea of Bimba Pratibimba Baba. Of there is the independent Brahman and there are the dependent Jivas, which include what? Not just you and me, but it also includes Surya. It includes Chandra. It includes Indra. It includes Agni. So all these fellows, the Abhimani Devatas are able to do something is because I am sitting inside them there as their Antaryamin as, as their Bimbarupa Paramatma. And similarly, for all the things that you do, I am sitting inside as your Bimbarupa, controlling all the things that you are doing. Okay. So you need, so this is again, it brings about this idea of independence. And why does he say that? Katha Upanishad, again, we have seen this in, in the first Adhyaya, second Valley, 23rd Valley. Na ayam atma pravachanena labhiha. Na medaya na bahuna shutena. Yam yevesha vrunute tena labhyaha tasya yesha atma vivrunute tanun swam. So it, this again is the same. And he will show, so Shushu, this is the answer to your question here about, yes, we can study the Vedas. We can study a million Veda uh, verses. Okay. And we can talk about Brahman. We are doing all these pravachanas and discussions here. We can talk about him. You can memorize all the verses. Okay. But what will happen? Unless he is he who is sitting inside you as your antaryam and decides and says, okay, I am happy with this fellow. He's working hard. Let me actually give him the grace and then we'll get him have the real knowledge. Tasya esha atma vivrunote tanun swam. Okay, that is the idea here. Tameva bantam anubati sarvam. Because the supreme Brahman is li lights, anubati sarvam. So everybody else, Chandra, Surya, Taraka, and Vidyuta, Agni, they are all having this light capacity to emit light because of this. Similarly, all these fellows will have knowledge. Because I will give them the grace. If I say, yes, they can have knowledge, then that happens. Yeah. So that is what Jayatirtha has also said, said isn't it? And, and I've said this a million times again. Paramatmano atyanta binyasya swataha chidananda atma kasya jivasya anadi avidya kama karmadi nimittaha ayam paramartata eva anyata karaha dukkha dhyanartaha na parameshwara prasadat rute apagachati. Nacha asasha kurto asau ad prasidati. 
नीदित स्वूप शक्य साक्षात कर्मी सकल गुणाकतया निशेष दोष गंध विदुरता च तम प्रतिपादयत अशेष आमनाया प्रवर्तन तद उपाकरण भूता च ब्रह्मीमांसाई परमार्थ द फाइनल स्टेटमेंट ऑफ जयतीर्थ इन इज न्याय सुध विच इज दि दि फाउंडेशन ऑफ वेदांति फिलॉसफी हि कैन बी नोन ओनली थ्रू वेदस वेदास कैन बी अंडरस्टूड ओनली यूजिंग ब्रह्म मीमांसा और ब्रह्म सूत्र हि इज टू बी नोन एज दि अबोड ऑफ इंफिनेट ऑफ स्पीशियस एक्टिव्यूज एंड विदउट एनी डिफेक्ट अनलेस वी नो हिम वी कैन नॉट सी हिम अनलेस वी सी हिम वी कैन नॉट ऑप्टेन हिज grace god's grace is absolutely essential for release from bondage so for us to reach this stage release from bondage where we will have our shuka our sukha and our shanti hi we have to start somewhere and we start here and what do the vedas including the katha upanishad tell us they talk about the bimba pratibimba philosophy of independence and dependence and the multiplicities of jivas and the matter which is all dependent on this supreme being and that we get that knowledge through the vedas okay so that is the grand idea of the second valli of the second adhyaya iti kataka upanishadi dvitiya adhyaya dvitiya valli so we finish the second valli here and we can pat our backs that we have successfully done the second valli but if you think the second valli is amazing the third valli is even more amazing okay so we will probably do some initial introduction into the second valli and we'll catch this uh, in subsequent weeks okay so the third valli so third valli has got 18 verses okay no surprises there 18 we are all world's expert on number 18 so the third and the final valli of katha upanishad has 18 verses and i just want to start the first verse uh it's 1408 will finish at 1415 or 1420 so what is the first verse urdva moolo avakshaah esha ashvattah sanatanah tadeva shukram tad brahma tadeva amruta muchyate tasmin lokaah shritaah sarve tadu na atyeti kashchana etad dvaitat okay beautiful verse but previously i told you that god can be known only through the vedas and to know him through his vedas we need to have his grace and now here yama is also now telling okay yes vedas you need to know the vedas to know the brahman but that does not mean that the external world is a damn useless place that you can't make anything out of the external world except that this is a place of misery no it all depends on your perspective how you look at it okay so when acharya says बहुचित्र जगत बहुदा करना परशक्ति अनंत गुण परम इन द्वादश स्त्रोत्र बहुचित्र जगत दिस जगत दिस यूनिवर्स दट यू आर यू आर देर एट दिस पॉइंट इट इज वंडरफुल मैन इट इज अमेजिंग हू से दिस इज अ मिजरेबल प्लेस ओनली दर्वर्ड्स विल से दिस इज अ मिजरेबल स्पेस प्लेस you need to have the perspective to look at it in a proper way what is the proper way we'll come to that next but what acharya is saying is this universe is amazing it is not some perverted imagination or illusion okay if this universe is so intricate and amazing even if you don't want to read the vedas just have this idea if this universe is so amazing how amazing must be its creator that's a basic question and of course none of us ask that question we just go through our mundane lives day in and day out not thinking about this big question how many of us walk out and look at the stars and the moons and think about the universe and so oh my god this is amazing what is who created all this no we don't we only think about who was the director of this particular movie that's all we are interested in we are not interested in who is the director of this amazing universe acharya wants us to ask that and that is exactly what yama is saying yeah when he says urdu muloha arvak avak shakaha ashvattah sanatanah in this verse Uh, you might that might remind you of a verse of course think about that because that quiz is coming so when bahuchitra jagat we understand we are, then veda vyasa has of course told us janmadya syetah he is given a definition of this brahman he who is the creator of the universe etc is brahman and also in the fourth adhyaya he said jagat vyapara varcham the affairs of universe that is its creation its maintenance its dissolution its its uh, uh, controllership etc is all under the purview of brahman only and nobody else okay this is vedavyasa statement jagat vyapara varjam 
If you can't remember Janma Desya Yataha, at least remember this one, Jagat Vyapara Varjam. Because that is the foundational sutra for theistic philosophy. Okay? And you cannot have a monistic philosophical explanation for Jagat Vyapara Varjam, period. Yeah? So these are all key verses where by knowing the universe, you can actually understand the greatness of its creator. And again, Jayatirtha talks about you know, when, when Veda Vyasa has said Janmadhyya Seyataha, this world has to be real. Janmadhyya Seyataha iti Bhagavata Sutra Karena Jagat Udayadi Nimitta Karanatvam Parasya Brahmano Lakshanam Abhihitam Nata Jagat Satyata Mantarena Tad Vastavam Sambhavati. Period. If this universe is amazing and this is such a vast universe and, uh, and various telescopes are still looking at it, the Voyager has just left the our solar system and it is still traveling at 17 kilometers a second, and we still not reach the end of the universe. This universe is so vast, it's so amazing. Who created this? This created universe has to be real because otherwise Veda Vyasa will not give a definition of Janma Desya Yataha, okay? He who is the creator of this universe. Veda Vyasa will not say, you know, he who is the creator of this illusory universe, that is Brahman, okay? Nobody is gonna say that, okay? So those are all the ideas that we need to think about when we think about the universe because our Guru Yama talks about this Jagat Vriksha and he this, this, this Jagat, which is this, he takes this as a big Vriksha or a tree. And here, very familiar to your chapter 15, first verse, he says Ashwattaha, this universe. And also this Samsara is also a universe. And this Samsara is real, this Universa is real. Only when there is a real disease, then there is a question of his eradication. If somebody thinks there is an illusory disease and I'll go to a doctor for his eradication, good luck to him. Okay. So Ashwatta becomes very, very interesting. Urtuva Mulaha, Avak Shakaha, Ashwattaha, Sanatanaha. Okay. So here is a quiz. Who is going to tell us the verse in chapter 15, which is very similar to this? Who wants to take that quiz, please, before I go to the next one? So you, it's an open book, so anybody can look at it uh, in your WhatsApp. Oh, no, I can tell, Madhuji, Padmajaya. Now go for it, Padmaja. Urdva mola matashakam ashvattam prahuravyam chandamsi asya parnani yastam vedasa vedavit. Beautiful, very good, Padmaja ji. Got it absolutely spot on. 15.1, urdva moolam adahashakam ashvattam. Exactly the same. Okay, so the, the question there is why Ashwatha was used? And uh, my teacher would say, why Ashwatha used? Why not mango tree? Why not banana? Why not a neem tree? Uh, why only Ashwatha is used? Why Krishna has to use Ashwatha? Why uh, Yama also has to use Ashwatha? Okay, so that idea, I want to close today's session with that idea because I thought I'll do a bit more, but we don't have time. So we'll see if we can do some justice to this word Ashwatha. Why Yama and, and Krishna took this universe as Ashwatta? Okay. And I've summarized this for our benefit and I've taken 10 meanings. We have done this slide. It's actually a recycling from Gita when a Purushottama Yoga discussion, uh, the first word, the 15th chapter, first verse. So let me just go through this. So there are two ways of actually looking at this verse Ashwatta. So here Yama has said, Urdva Mulo Avakshakaha Yeshaha Ashwattaha Sanatanaha. And Krishna has said Urdva Mulam Adahashakam Ashwattam Prahur Avyayam. Ashwattaha Sanatanaha Ashwattam Avyayam. So there are similar ideas but slightly different. So we'll, we'll deal with that in the next class. But let's just take this Ashwattaha. So Yama, just to remind you, yes, Vedas are required, but understanding the universe will also help you understand the greatness of the Supreme. So Ashwattaha. So in, in Krishna himself, he said Ashwattaha Sarva Vrikshanam in Vibhuti Yoga. So you can take Ashwatha. Why Ashwatha was picked up by both Yama and Krishna is one Ashwatha in the Vedic times was always considered as a very sacred tree. Okay. So this universe is a very sacred place, to be honest. Because this is a place where we do our sadhanas to know the universe, to go to Brahman. So in that sense, this universe is a very sacred place. But uh, we can, of course, have a perverted view and say that this is a miserable place. But actually, it is, a, it is an amazing place to do our sadhana. Okay? And it is a very sacred place to do our sadhana. And that is why 
it is taken up in one form as ashwatha because in the vedic times ashwatha tree was very sacred okay and what do the rishis used to do the sticks of ashwatha were used as samidhi for all the yagnas okay so that is also another reason why ashwatha is taken up here now of course the second approach to ashwatha is the tree per se is is a very it's it's very unique to the subcontinent uh, and maybe it is there in other other southeast asian places but it is not in europe and other places definitely not so what the the, the ashwatha tree is huge and it it kind of spreads and its roots can go for a long it, it just spreads and it's all pervasive the roots and it is such a massive tree and the idea there is when you look at this massive tree it should remind you of the massive universe okay and how it has gone everywhere and and again krishna has said in in chapter 15 is that he said is who knows the middle or the end or the starting point of the universe nobody knows yeah it is so vast and similarly ashwatha tree is vast so it gives you a sense of vastness of the universe ashwatha tree in english is also called people tree so i got a small little quiz here which rishi of prashna upanishad has a similar name so who wants to take this up pippalada very good padma ji ji yes pippalada so pippalada rishi is the main character of uh, prashna upanishad right and all this uh, kabandi katyayana and all these uh, other rishis go to him and ask six question and that is pippalada he was under the people tree doing all his great yagnas and stuff okay so that pippalada is from the so the pippala is also another name of ashwatha and that is how the people tree comes okay then of course there is another meaning which uh, which people say is ashwatha tree the leaves of the ashwatha tree is constantly shaking and it's 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 constantly moving so that is another meaning in sanskrit it's called chala dalaha so ashwatha is also called chala dalaha because it's constantly moving okay look at the ideas how our rishis look at ashwatha that this is giving you an idea of the universe the universe is vast the universe is constantly moving this universe is a sacred place where you do your sadhanas okay and hence ashwatha okay that is rudi artha that is taking the ashwatha as a single entity now of course we are interested in yoga artha that is etymology break it open and see what it means so this some of you will be very familiar ashwa and taha shwa means tomorrow taha means taha remaining a shwa taha that which does not remain the same like today so again what is the idea there that which is constantly moving this constantly moving universe is therefore called ashwatha what is ashwa ashwa we know means horse why is it horse Uh, why our rishis have said ashwa as hor horse is something that is constantly moving it is very fast and it is restless and it's constantly moving that is why it's called ashwa so this universe is constantly moving do ashwataha so ashwa then again the the, the etymology of ashwa is ashuva ashu means that which moves very fast yeah and that is ashwa so when our in brihadaranik upanishad for example in the in the first adhyaya you have ashwa brahmanam ashwamedha brahmanam and all that so when you when you read ashwamedha brahmanam and ashwa brahmanam it is not just some animal sacrifice that is been described it is talking about the ashwa this universe and also this brahman who is also called ashwa why because ashu means that which moves very fast so what are all the things that move very fast in our lives horse moves fast of the vedic times now maybe it is the is the jet aircraft or it is one of the supersonic max 6 or max 7 air force uh, you know uh, war planes they move very fast so they are also you can call them as ashwa your mind wind can move very fast vayu moves very fast call ashwa mind is the fastest that we know mind moves very fast that is why taitare upanishad said yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasa sah because mind moves very fast but there is another entity which is even faster than the mind and that is paramatma himself so this vishnu is also called ashwa in that sense okay ashu va va there becomes jnana so he is his knowledge is very fast it is the fastest knowledge that exists out there which means that he is the most omniscient being so in that sense ashwa means 
the omni sign being so here is the reason for that you have hayagriva right hayagriva namaka paramatma who teaches vedas to chatumukha brahma why is that it's not this god has a face of a horse and sitting there no it is all very very um, metaphorical for us to understand that it gives you idea of somebody who has knowledge which is very fast a very omni sign person he is that is why he is called hayagriva nama he is got the appearance of a face of a horse so now when you hold on to this idea of ashwa as hayagriva namaka paramatma this person is ashwa tata so if you take this ashwa as the universe this ashwa is called ashwataha because inside this universe is this ashwa namaka paramatma who is all pervaded tataha ashwa tataha ashwataha okay and this universe becomes his food tam as you know is food yeah atiti ti tam tata so that's how that's how the derivation is tam is food so this universe in pralaya is his food so ashvatam okay. and this ashvata that is why he is sitting on this ashvata leaf in primordial matter before creation so all these metaphorical ideas that our vedic rishis tell us should 100% not be taken literally it is not that krishna is this baby krishna is sitting on an ashvata leaf before creation there is no ashvata leaf before creation okay so that is not how we understand it we understand it by when we understand the philosophy and the greatness of our rishis who have said this okay so i made a start to the third and the final valli of uh, kataka upanishad today and we'll close today because then of course this verse talks about urdhvaha moolaha and so on so there, there's so much etymology that needs to be discussed there and we will catch up next uh, sunday to pick up on these verses of uh, the second valley so on that note i'm going to close today's session krishna pranamastu and we can take any questions sorry i went a bit longer because i missed uh, two weeks and i just want to capture and um, you know catch up with lots of syllabus as it were so we will hopefully finish upanishad katha upanishad at least the initial thinking of the katha upanishad if we need to hold on to one upanishad and spend the rest of our lives understanding we can just sit on katha upanishad and and practice it that is also fine but if we are going to be doing another upanishad chintana then maybe from february mid february or march we should pick up another uh, upanishad and i'll send a survey monkey uh, uh, you know form for us to decide which one we want to do okay so on that note krishna pranamastu again and any questions if not we will close the session Uh, no questions, but uh, just Pralad here, Madhu. Just Pralad. want to say, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, just two seconds. I was just want to join this forum with one of the uh, uh, things uh, from Katha Upanishad, which I watched the video. I will recite quickly. With that inspiration, I am joining. Yeah. Shravana ya pi bahu bhi yuvan labhya. Shrinvanto pi bahu non yenna vidyu. आश्चर्य वक्ता कुशलानो शब्द आश्चर्य ज्ञाता कुशलान शिष्ट सो दट वाट यू एक्सप्लेन टू गेट दिस नॉलेज इफ यू वॉन्ट टू हेव नॉलेज इज नो वे टू टीच या बट सो वी हेव दट अपॉर्चुनिटी बट थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग दिस वंडरफुल प्रहला जी एंड वेलकम टू अवर फोरम एंड वे होप टू यू नो विजेंट यू इन दिस फोरम मच मोर या थैंक यू वेरी मच एनीबडी एल्स Okay, fantastic. So, if there are no further questions, can I ask uh, Suresh Ji to take us through Om Kara, and then we'll close today's session, please. Om wonderful thank you uh, stay safe everyone we'll catch up again next sunday okay oh next sunday oh what's the what's the view here next sunday is christmas so are we breaking off for christmas and then we'll catch up uh, maybe first week of january what is the view here can i take a quick poll please so sure okay. I thought you said it two week break and then restart okay. next day, isn't okay, it? Okay, fine. So if that is a uh, yeah, we'll stick to that then. So should so we will catch up again from first week of January. So uh, enjoy your Christmas and New Year break. 
and um, it looks like first week of january we'll catch up and carry on with the third valley okay take care everyone hare krishna bye thank you thank you, thank you madhu